Okay, let's meet the four o'clock train. What do you say? Okay, well, doggone it, we have no train in Prescott anymore, so we can't meet the four o'clock train that way. However, there's a fabulous train exhibit at Charlotte Hall Museum. Ken Lay, wonderful to have you with us again. Thank you for having us again. Thank you. So this exhibit's been ongoing. Yes. Very popular. What's in the exhibit? Well, it has a 100 plus years of history about the train travel as well as trains being part of Prescott and its uh, centerpiece is a beautiful HO scale railroad model of downtown Prescott including the depot the old roundhouse that we used to have and shows where the tracks where it's 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 a fabulous exhibit the roundhouse I think was at Foxworth Galbraith wasn't yes, it? because they still area. have mm -hmm. that so you know we always drive through it to pick up supplies and it's like oh cool yeah. this was the old yes. roundhouse and you can still see the trestle that's going across Granite Creek which is depicted yes. in this exhibit Oh, that is too fun. I bet our model railroad guys built that for us. Yes, the they? Central Arizona Model nice. Railroad Club was kind enough to put this together and they maintain it for us to make sure that it Good. keeps working. The kids love to come and push the button and then watch the train go around. <laughs> when they come the on, bells. I get to blow the horn. I always love that <laughs> when they set up here. Well, trains were very important. I mean, they very brought much. us uh, supplies and everything. Yeah, uh, and, and remember, we started as a mining town and we started as a ranching town. So how do you get the ore to where it needed to be to be whatever it was going to be? And so the railroads came down. There were two different attempts to try and have railroads mm -hmm. brought in. We tried to catch the line that was going transcontinental up in the Flagstaff wow, area. Really? And so they created a line and it was done very quickly with bonds and all of this kind of financing and almost imp impeded us becoming a state back in 1912. Okay. So there's a lot of history behind we that first bring railroad. Bring the train, yeah. bring us the train. And so another group came in and competed. So all of a sudden we had two competing railroad oh. companies trying to harness the Prescott and the mountains around us and the mining operation. So it's a, it's a fascinating story that's all depicted in the exhibit at Charlotte Hall Museum. Oh, how fun with trains and pictures yeah. and whistles and lights and uh, all kinds yes. of fun things like that. Well, and I, I knew we had it until I believe 18, uh, 1968 something, 1963, Yes, it was mid-60s like that. that we had passenger travel and we still had freight travel up until the 1980s, oh. but then the tracks kind of disappeared. Gone. You can still see the remnants of the roadbed you can still walk the Pea Vine Trail, Pea which is trail. where it'll, where the train used to come in. And uh, now this is going to be there for another how long? About another month and a half. Okay. And we finish it up right after Christmas, and then we're going to be introducing the World War One and Arizona. Arizona and how did it react to World War One? Because wow. 1918 is when we were in the thick of things back there. Well, right. We had just gotten statehood, I believe, in 1912. 1912. Right. Valentine's Day, which yes. I thought was very... <laughs> yeah. And women hadn't gotten their rights in Arizona yet. I know. All kinds of things going all on. All kinds you know, of things going in. on. Yes. Well, speaking of all kinds of things going on, Charlotte Hall Museum is going to build an education center. This is fabulous yes. news. So it's just in the planning stages right now, Ken. Yes. We're still in the planning and fundraising stages. One of the challenges that we have is our Lawler exhibit building. We can't build any more exhibits. We only have about 6% of what the collections that we have available to exhibit, but we don't have the space for it. Uh, so part of what we need to do is increase the size of our theater area. Right now it can only seat about 50 to 70 people for an event. Right. And you, you I've find seen it that out a lot. lots of times. Yes. So part of what we want to do is create a new education center to where the downstairs would be a new auditorium that would seat between 135 and 140 visitors. And it would be a multi-purpose type of event center so that we could do play we can do presentations and lectures and education of course is a very important part of the museum yeah. and then upstairs we'd have classrooms and facilities for uh, different training opportunities because we train a lot of volunteers we love sure. our volunteers to greet the public or yes. you know there's the live reenactment uh, I That's we right. even got the archives all kinds of yeah. stuff all kinds Charlotte of things Hall. over there and all the historic buildings it's a wonderful place just to go visit now is this yeah. going to be on an entirely new location on the campus of Charlotte Hall Museum or building on 
onto something. It, well, it's going to be an addition, so to speak, of the existing Lawler, but okay. it, there's a parking lot right there at the corner yes. of Beach Avenue and McCormick. Okay. And so it's going to be literally across the street from our library and archives mm -hmm. facility, and it'll be a, a two-story addition to the red brick building that's there already. Wow. So we're looking that forward to be being great. adding that on it. How are you going to pay for this, Ken? Uh, well, we're asking for the community <laughs> Hate to support. Ask the hard yes, the hard question. Uh, Fred Vale, the executive director, has been working diligently and working with our community partners to create this event. Uh, we had targeted about uh, 12 months ago that it would cost about 2.2 million dollars to build, and we've already been able to raise over 1.4 million oh, of incredible. that. Incredible! Are there any matching funds, or does this? Oh state yes, this is. This is well, the, the state. You know, we don't always get quite so much money for buildings you know, from the okay. state, so it's all coming from the community. Wow, so we need to dip into our pockets then and yes. help in terms of, of ramping up our education here because, Very much. you know, I mean, Charlotte Hall herself was, you know, she came in, I think, like 1912 or something. I mean, it was, uh, and started the yeah. museum in the late 20s, yeah. uh, 28 or whatever. Yeah. And, you know, but it was a focus to preserve the Prescott history, to That's preserve right. this area, and that continues. Yes, very much yeah. so. We just opened up the Prescott Culture, which completes one end of the entire Lawler Exhibit Center, and so now we want to continue. That brought us from the place to see an epic the 14,000 years ago up to the introduction of the European settlers to Arizona. Now we want to bring it forward in history nice. through the Civil War, through the Spanish-American War, to the present. And we need to have that space. And until yeah. we, we get the new building, it's going to be very challenging. Because our history has been continuing. Yes. <laughs> Ken Lee history and Charlotte, always stays alive. It does stay alive. We're always making history every minute. We just made Absolutely. history, Ken. Wonderful. Yes. Well, anyway, thank you for joining <laughs> us again. Thank Charlotte you. Home Museum, wonderful place down there, right on Gurley Street uh, by the plaza, sort of a block and a half away. Yep, Thanks. two blocks from the plaza. We'll keep an eye on all that stuff and get on over and see the trains. How fun. Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> thank you, Ken.